Hi guys, I am going live completely unannounced. I haven't even told any of the people that I work with um, about this. I just sort of chose to do this right now, which I never do. So if you're catching this Facebook live, good for you. Um, otherwise, if you're watching this in the future, enjoy. I want to talk about money. And I've been looking at putting on a, um, by the way, I'm Shannon, if you don't know me, nice to meet you, everybody out there. I am currently in day nine of my 14 day Australia hotel quarantine, which is why there's a hotel room behind me. Excuse the sort of made bed. Um, making beds is not my strong scoot, but making money is. So I am, um, anyways, day nine, and I was thinking about um, like what I could create while I was in here, and I really, really, really want to do more money stuff, but let me talk to you guys about that. So I have grown a multi-million dollar international uh, consciousness business facilitating access consciousness, and the only reason I'm telling you it's multi-millions is to kind of give you guys the perspective of where I'm coming from and that I've actually put this stuff into action. This is not just theoretical money talk. This is real stuff that I have chosen and done that has worked. So I did a class called Money Come about two years ago. And it was a whole year long program, 12 months. And it was really dynamic and super powerful. And um, a lot of people were on it. And it was a super interesting thing for me to experience because I watched people be extremely enthusiastic right outside the gate and then about four calls in people started not showing up and people started losing enthusiasm and what I when we got to the end it was like there was really just a handful of people that really listened used the tools and applied and actually got dynamic financial results and so I took that as like a small oh, like a small win but also like this massive awareness of how many people think they want to change their money stuff and they think they have a money problem or they think they want to change money stuff but they don't it's actually not a money thing for them and so I you know Hello everyone who's just joining. I hope you're catching this. I'm just doing this completely impromptu Facebook Live just for fun. I'm in my Australian hotel quarantine and want to talk about money and I keep trying to package it in like a podcast or like a class or a blogger. It's not working. So anyways, I thought I would just get on here and talk. So I hope you catch this. I hope you find get some great stuff out of this. Um, so coming to 2021, I had people being like, why don't you do another money class? And the thing that I immediately came up against was I would love to because I actually love money. Um, I enjoy money. I have so much enthusiasm creating money. I have a lot of ability with money, which frankly is unique. Um, but I noticed that like, people are constantly taking it to this place of difficulty and not really looking at what they're choosing. Like they say they want money to be different, but they're not really willing to do what it takes. Or they think that money's the problem, but really it's like a choice they're making that they need to acknowledge or make a different choice. It, it, it's so many things. So I noticed that that really came up for me with the money thing. And I thought, well, what kind of money class would I actually really, would I enjoy? And I have been working on this book that what would it take for it to come together with more ease? Um, I am notoriously slow at writing books. It's called The Economy of Consciousness. And I did a podcast on this. So if you know I have a podcast, I might put a link or if maybe somebody could put a link in the chat to the podcast. Um, it's called Consciousness Anywhere. So you can search for that on any of the platforms that you listen to your podcasts. Um, I have quite a few money podcasts and one of them is called The Economy of Consciousness. Another one is called The Exponali Exponentialization of the Economy of Consciousness. And it's the exponentialization podcast that I go into a lot more detail about what the economy of consciousness is. Hello everyone who's just joining. Thanks for showing up for this money Facebook Live. Um, so the economy of consciousness is essentially, well, if you don't know what the economy is, the economy is 
in its simplest form what people do to get what they want. That's essentially what creates the economy. It's people choosing their lives. So the economy is you taking action to get the things that you need, whether that's food, resources, entertainment, money. So it's all the actions that we take in our societies that create what we call the economy. And the economy is massive because the complexity of our societies and our cultures are so multifaceted and there's like so many different businesses and services that go into the facilitation of sometimes like if you just think about like a hotel for example how many different different resources services um and things go into just running a single hotel so they're actually talking about that like services is gonna is like really like gonna be the new economy because we've what has been a lot of the you know so basically this reality calls the economy like what we produce and what we consume and how that what is produced is distributed and consumed and so the economy of consciousness is essentially just like the less limited expression of the economy so consciousness does have an economy instead of productivity consciousness is generative instead of distribution consciousness it, consciousness ex expands and receives instead of consumption consciousness receives so whether or not you understand the economy and sort of like what the cornerstones or the definitions of economy are and what an economy is um, you can still understand this thing about what you value and so the economy is largely built on what people value and what people are willing to pay for and what people are willing to do to get what they value and something that i became very aware of well my dad made me very aware of was how little consciousness was valued on this planet amongst people and how consciousness is this abundant resource it's like everywhere it's it's, it's available for you in every moment to choose and do people value consciousness do they even know what consciousness is so consciousness is like this extremely abundant extremely vital element and resource that most people do not value let alone hmm take put in the energy to get to know what it is uh and this isn't just about consciousness i mean you can relate this to a bunch of stuff that exists in the universe that you don't really know about like gravity <laughs> like you, you were told that it exists but you don't really know how it works um, or you never really even think about it. It's just always there, just like consciousness. But without consciousness, things don't work. Without gravity, the whole planet, I mean, life reality would be completely different too. So without consciousness, everything would be completely different. And consciousness for me is what has provided all of my life to come and has given this gift, has created life in ways that I never could have projected or expected and have has been this abundant space of everything working out better and better and greater and greater all the time so as i have chosen more consciousness and welcome if you're just tuning in this is a facebook live about money and i'm doing a very very wide loop right now and talking about the economy of consciousness which is a money discussion that i am very interested in and if you desire to change the way that money um, and stuff shows up in your life, you might want to listen to this to see if there's some points of view that you can change that would allow you to open up to a greater flow of possibility. So, yeah. So the economy of consciousness also has resources. So we all know what resources are water, iron, ore, oxygen, etc. Um, and a lot of the market of this reality and our current cultural economies is based on the trading of resources. And what everybody needs to recognize is that consciousness also has resources. And again, when it's a resource of consciousness, it's usually extremely undervalued, <laughs> which is why most people don't recognize them or 
or put much value on them. And so some of those resources of consciousness are ease. Ease is a very real element and resource that we can have in our lives or cannot have in our lives. And so ease is actually one of the primary resources of consciousness. The more consciousness you have, the more ease you'll have access to. And vice versa, the more ease that you prioritize, usually the more consciousness you will allow in your universe and in the universe. So consciousness has resources and one of them is ease. One of them is joy. Is joy something that you value? You know, is it something that you seek out? Is it something that you consciously cultivate and access? And so you can see just by these examples of um, ease and joy as resources of consciousness, you can start to see how consciousness has all of these incredible elements that most of us devalue. And the other funny thing about the resources of consciousness is they're free. <laughs> You know, it's like you can't actually pay for them. They are in total abundance and available for you to choose all the time. And then this other thing that I noticed as I was over the years getting more conscious and also looking at like financial creation was that I would sort of like flip flop between like getting super distracted by money and money is actually one of the distractor implants and access. There are these things called the distractor implants and money is one of them. And how many of you guys are constantly distracted by money? Making money, how much something costs, whether you can afford it or not, whether you should pay, whether you shouldn't pay, what is it worth? How much does it cost? What should I spend? What shouldn't I spend? It's like this constant distraction of money. And I started noticing that I had what I actually will call like a financial obsession otherwise known as gold sickness. And I got the gold sickness term from Lord of the Rings because in one of the stories, and I can't remember which one, um, Thorin, who is like the head dwarf, like when they get Smog's gold, like they find Smog's lair and like they chase Smog out and then they have like all that gold, he gets what they coin in that story as gold sickness where he has now more gold than he's ever had in he's ever seen in his life, but he starts getting really paranoid that like all of his friends are out to get him and someone's going to steal the money and take the money from him. So like literally the money, the gold starts possessing him and distracting him into all of this jealousy and defense. And he's not happy about the money. He's going crazy around the money. And how much do you see that going on in the world? And maybe this is something that you've experienced personally where you're financially insane. Like you are constantly thinking really heavy or really in really heavy and really difficult ways around money. You're constantly distracted by money. Everything has to be measured by money. And if there isn't a financial measure or equivalent, it like has no value. I used to create a lot of difficulty in my world by measuring the, my level of success based on how much money I made. I'm pretty sure others can relate to that too. And what I started realizing about that was like when I was focusing on the money, I was excluding the other changes and valuable things that were being created. Um, welcome if you're just tuning in to this Facebook Live. I'm doing it completely impromptu. This is my host Australia Hotel 14 day quarantine room behind me. I wanted to hop on and do a money talk for these different things that I'm looking at around money that I might end up doing a class about at some point. <laughs> so my financial obsession is something that I have only just recently been able to really identify in my world and something that's really important to recognize about money is that money, number one, money as we know it today was basically invented to facilitate the trade. Money isn't naturally occurring. It's not something that you find in nature. It's something that man uses to trade with one another. And in that regard, money does make trade a lot easier. However, people forget that like if money goes away, like you'll still be alive, you'll still have a body, you'll still walk and talk and eat and experience. You know, it's like it's money tends to be the distraction rather than the tool that we work with or utilize to facilitate the world that we want to live in. So 
what also you have to recognize about money is that it follows your choices. So oftentimes we have it backwards that money is what gives us choice. Um, welcome everybody who's just tuning in to this very impromptu money Facebook live I'm doing. And you have to recognize it's actually not true. Like money is not what gives you choice. Money actually follows your choices. So if you choose to have something greater, whatever that is, and then ask the universe, like, okay, like, how can I do this? How can I afford this? Where can the money come from? Where can this come from? Even beyond money, like, cause a lot of things can show up even without money. Yes, money makes it easier to sort of get what you want like immediately, but there is a lot that's possible without money. And so it's to recognize that how many of you guys justify not choosing because you don't have the money. And that's just sort of one of the stories that we tell ourselves and the ways in which we distract ourselves with money is by telling ourselves that we like don't have a choice unless we have the money, which is not true. Money follows your choices. And so it's, you have to flip it around and to recognize that um, when people have financial problems, it's because they hate money. And this is one of the biggest predicates about money that almost nobody wants to look at is, I mean, just right now, think about all your like points of view about money. Like, how do you feel about it? Do you feel peaceful and grateful about money or do you feel anxious and, you know, resentful, etc.? And sort of it's like, if you don't, the thing is, it's like, if you don't like money, it won't come into your life. And I feel like that's like the easiest, it's, this is, that is the most profound element about having money in your life. And it's so simple, but it's so difficult for people to be honest with themselves about what it are like deeply their fundamental belief systems about stuff, especially with money. So one of the, like, if people are having difficult difficulty financially, it's because they're choosing it. And this is where we really need to get into like the, like having like the courage of our convictions and like claiming and owning our choices and like how your life is showing up is based, it's like, your life is a demonstration of what you're choosing essentially. And then I know like when you hear this and you're like, yeah, but I think I'm choosing to have money. And it's like, it can be so frustrating to still be having financial problems while like you deep, like you honestly and deeply believe that like you think you want money. But what's actually true is that if money is still not coming into your life with ease, it's because you don't like it. And this is, um, something that is really big in my household because my husband was a extremely financially, grew up in an extremely financially abusive household. Money was always used to manipulate and control. And, you know, he's one of those people who was promised this big inheritance if he behaved. And when he married me, his father like tried to take away his inheritance basically. And it was sort of like the first time he saw that like the money wasn't a gift, the money was a way of controlling him. So he, so he has this, has, was basically raised with, as money was used as a weapon against him, not as like a source of kindness or possibility in the household. So he basically doesn't like money because it was used, you know, it's sort of like if you were beaten with a belt every day of your life, you might have some issues with belts. So he tends to not want to have any money in his life because money has been such a huge source of pain for him and that's something he's working on and all of us have our weird money things that we were subjected to as kids um, that we really have to question now as adults because so many of the money insanity that we buy and function from and are taught in our households it's so deeply ingrained as like what's true because as a kid you're not like you don't have the vantage point to recognize like oh okay my parent is like not my parent is wrong here or my parent is insane in this area you just think that what your parents are is like what is so you buy it and so now as adults you have to really question um what you grew up around and really look at like okay so like what's really true and that's what i find is like most people just don't even really know what's true about money and so i got really inspired to do like financial education which i think is interesting because number one i think most people don't really give a shit about money. They want money, but they don't want to actually pay attention to it. So it makes it difficult. And then like, 
then when I say financial education, like what comes up for me is like business school or like the money market or something, which isn't, this isn't that. This isn't that kind of money education. This is actually the truth of money. Um, money markets and the economy and, you know, business school and stuff, that's like what people think creates. That's not actually what creates. And I am not saying that those things aren't valuable. I think somebody does something with that stuff. But like, I am essentially a high school dropout. I'm severely dyslexic. I'm, I think we've all heard this story a lot of times about people who are like real underdogs who then go on to be real leaders and successful in a lot of ways. And that's definitely me. I was, you know, extremely dysfunctional in school and hated school. And I mean, I'm so dyslexic that like, I'm going to admit something to you guys that I only learned how many digits or how many zeros were in a million last year. And that's when I was 40 years old. And that's sort of like me admitting something that I think is very socially shameful, like, oh, aren't you stupid? You don't know how many zeros are in a million. But every dyslexic out there knows exactly what I'm talking about. And I learned it because my husband finally taught, was able to teach me that. And I was able to retain that information. And so like, I, you do not have to have a proper education to be rich. And you definitely don't have to be, you know, like, correct in society or have like a degree in business or be an econ econ economist um, because money comes towards choice. So that's what I would really love to talk about and teach people about and to also help people get beyond money as the only source and recognize that like money is a part of creating our lives. It's not the target of our lives, nor should it be the obsession of our lives, nor is it what gives us life so if you are tuning in welcome to this extremely impromptu money facebook live i have basically told absolutely no one that i was going to do this i just sort of i told my husband and some of the women i work with that i was like i think i want to do some money stuff while i'm in quarantine i'm currently in day nine of my australian 14-day hotel quarantine i am currently looking at the Brisbane River and talking to you guys about money. And I absolutely love money. Now, I didn't always love money. I used to, like I was a super righteous hippie. I was like living in a van. I like only organic, 100% sustainable. It's like, you must live in this way and this way. I like didn't shave my legs. I was like, you know, I, I had an extreme, I was living a very extreme, I still live an extreme life, but in a completely different way. But anyways, I was a really righteous hippie and I thought that money was basically what was killing the planet and destroying the world. And that, you know, money, and, and, and I had also grown up in a household with a lot of financial stress and strain. And so money was like always the source of like so much stress in my household. And so I just essentially hated money. And it was my dad, after a while, he like divorced my mom and moved on da, 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 and he started like creating financially differently. And he asked me, he's like, do you love or hate money? And I was like, I don't even know. Like, I didn't know. I could, well, I did know, but I wasn't like, I didn't get it in my own world until one day I spotted it. And I was like, oh, right. I hate money. Like I have so much, I had so much resentment about it that I had to have it, that I had to do something for it. It was like, so to me, money was like just shit. And so I recognized that finally. And I was like, Oh yeah, I have a lot of negative connotations around money and a lot of like pretty bad points of view about money. And my dad said, look, it's like, as long as you hate money, you're always going to be pushing it out of your life. And it took me a while to get that, but an analogy that really helped me finally understand and get it was like, if like, let's say you are having a party and you're like inviting people, but like, you're like inviting them and being like, I hate you, but you should come over to my house. <laughs> it's like, is that going to, you know, really be an invitation to people? And so these sort of like attitudes we take towards money, like whether it's like super needy, super clingy, super controlling, super resentful. It's like we have to acknowledge. Sorry, I'm trying to it's getting warm in here. I'm like trying to turn my T-shirt into a tank top. Um, we have to acknowledge 
we have to acknowledge our points of view because it's your point of view that creates your reality. I know that sounds simple and I know that can sound super frustrating, but you have the power to create. Oh my God, you have the power to create and you have the power to destroy. Are you consciously utilizing those energetic resources or is your life being run by a bunch of points of view that you do not acknowledge you have? So it's the points of view that we have, it's the positions that we take that create the reality and the life that shows up for us. So I finally recognized that I hated money and that I was like basically like telling it I wanted to use it, but then I fucking hated it. And then I got that and I was like, okay, I really need to make a different choice. I need to, and I said to my dad, I was like, what do I do about this? And he's like, you need to start duplicating the energy of like basically loving money. But for me, I didn't even really know what that meant. And so I had to look around in the world and I was like, well, what does that even mean? And I was able to identify in two people that I knew actually this, what I wouldn't actually call love of money, but peace with money. And I noticed it and I, I hadn't actually been able, to, I didn't acknowledge what it was beforehand, but I finally I was like, oh, this person actually has like peace with money. I was like, yeah, I like that energy. <laughs> and I started duplicating so duplication is this energetic process where you sort of like you can become this other energy and i started duplicating this energy of peace with money and at first it was so hard for me it was like it was like trying to get up and run really fast after like sitting cross-legged for 50,000 years. You know, when you sit cross-legged and your legs fall asleep and then you try to get up and you like can't walk. It was like that. I'd be like, I tried to duplicate this energy of peace with money, but it was so foreign and so different. I could do it for like a second and it felt so weird and I'd stop. But I kept on exercising this energy of peace with money and like literally I started to become this different energy with money. And I would start to identify when I was doing like my hate energy with money and I'd, I'd notice it, I'd be like, okay, so if I actually like had peace and love and ease with money, what would that be? And I would like consciously choose to like change my energetic experience. And then one day I recognized that like, I was like, okay, so like what's my priority with money? And I realized that my priority was peace with money. Like no matter what, if I had money or I didn't have money, I had to have peace with it because I was so, I was so, did not want to constantly have um like have let money have so much of an effect on me how many of you guys have noticed that like money just like you can money you have let's face it like you can go you can have really difficult a lot of difficulty with money where it's like money makes you feel bad or money makes you angry or money makes you feel this or that and the other thing and money doesn't really do any of that it's you that's doing that and so I realized that like I had to stop abusing myself with money and psychologically around money and I had to prioritize peace with money. So like if I had money, I had peace. And if I didn't have money, I had peace because it's really weird because people actually are also uncomfortable with having money. There's like a discomfort of not having money and then there's like a discomfort of having money. And so I realized that like whatever the circumstances of my bank account were, the priority needed to be peace. And so from that day forward, and I like committed to like never abusing myself psychologically about money again, which is like kind of huge, meaning like whenever I started to feel bad about money in any way, in any context, like I stop and I, and I look at, okay, so like what would actually honoring me with money be? And I, so that's, that was, was like a massive change over a lot of years. And what that did was enable me to, to actually have, to change money from being an enemy to money being an ally in the creation of my life and also in the creation of the world that I would like to live in. So this is a very impromptu Facebook Live. Welcome to everybody who is joining. If you missed, um, oh yay, some people, oh yay, you posted. Oh good, so thank you, Amy, for posting the podcast. If you guys want to check out, I was talking in the beginning of this conversation about a couple, some, a bunch, I've actually done a bunch of money podcasts, some with my dad, some by myself, some with David Kubis, um, who's like my money love brother. 
like David and I have this I'm I feel like I've got like the money love of a Jew and he's got like the money love of like a German Austrian lawyer so together we are like very um, loving and very interested in money in ways that most people really aren't and whether you're interested in money or not probably money has had a huge impact on your life so if you are just tuning in um, you'll be able to go back and watch this whole Facebook Live. I'll make sure the video is pinned so everyone can see it. But uh, thank you, Amy, for posting the podcast because that's another resource that you guys can go and check out. And I just thought I would hop on Facebook and have this conversation about money because I keep on trying to like do it in the form of like a class or like a podcast or um, a book and nothing is, I don't know, it all just felt a little bit like, This is such a huge conversation and I wanted to just start putting a lot of this stuff out there for you guys. Um, Yeah, and there's some, oh, thank you. So, oh, and Angelique put a a link to some money blogs that I've had up and yeah, so there's tons of stuff on here. Um, Money. What would it be like, like what would it take for money to actually be like a source of nurturance and joy in your lives? And I hope that doesn't sound too much like what would it be like if you could fly (laughs) like a nice hope and dream, but like something that's impossible. I hope it actually feels I hope that you actually recognize that you can choose something different. And it might mean that you have to deeply, deeply and truly change some of your deepest psychological points of view and energetic stuff to be able to let money be that for you. But you can. Um, so cool. Okay. I think I'm kind of right. I think I'm kind of winding down here. There was a lot in this. I hope it was interesting. Um, keep an eye out. Uh, there's tons of other money resources. If you're watching this and like you do want to change something with money, hmm. Check out some of the stuff that's linked here. Um, I'm also going to add in the chat for this, like the resources, like the books and stuff that I use that really changed, really helped me change my financial life. And I'm also going to put a link for, I think I did a clearing night about money. And then, then I'm also gonna put a link for the money, the big money come class that I did. Um, so you guys can check those out if you want. Hello, everyone who's just hop- hopping on. We're winding down towards me finishing this Money Facebook Live. Um, I am currently in day nine of my 14-day Australian hotel quarantine, and I might hop on and do another um, Money Facebook Live over the next few days. Um, sort of see how this conversation settles in with you guys and thank you all for watching thanks everyone for being here with me um this is like my social hour while i'm in quarantine um and may all of money come to you with ease and joy and glory bye guys